Oh, I see Dustin's waiting for us. So uh, let's head. <laughs> what? I, I gotta get, I, I, Rob is doing great, such a great job, but I've got to get him to, because I am not the best at staying on top of things. <laughs> uh, Rob, you got to stay on me, brother. You, you I, gotta I was enjoying me. your monologue, Jim. I mean, you know, it was, it I was, was impassioned. You were, you were on a roll, and I was not going to stop you. Like you're, I honestly uh, thought there was a buildup that you were going to bring him in. That's what I was waiting on. <laughs> oh, trust me. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, billing time. Hey, buddy, how are you? Doing all right, Jim, about yourself, man. Uh, obviously, uh, Bloomington is overjoyed, I, as as it should be. Yeah, Bloomington uh, is enjoying the heck out of this ride uh, with Indiana. Mm -hmm. They had Fox Big Noon on those speaking now. I didn't think game day, this college weekend. game day would come. To, I didn't think game day would come because they're not a Big Ten partner. Uh, you know, they're and this is a Big Ten game, and so they're mm -hmm. not interested in pr pr promoting that. But it's just Indiana is such a darling right now that they're they'd be missing out on an opportunity. I think so. Obviously, there's, they felt that way, and there's a lot of IU uh, right. influence at the ESPN. And, and Big Ten, I mean, the Big Ten is too big for um, the. I mean, like, even if ESPN were just the most bitter company that ever existed, um, they, you know, like, it's basically one of the two major leagues. Like, there's, like, the SEC and the Big Ten and then the ACC and, uh, you know, the Big 12 and sort of a second tier. So you can't have, you know, as much as they can favor the SEC, they can't have it do anything, everything. I mean, like, their number one, their top analyst is a former Ohio State quarterback, um, you know, like – there are, yeah. I can't even begin to tell you how many Big Ten graduates working at ESPN. Like there's, there's only, you can only take it so far. And they're, you know, and, and I imagine their uh, budding superstar, Pat McAfee, probably had something to say also. Yes. Uh, he makes some, some level of impact. So wh whatever they could do about the SEC, being the SEC, you know, having the SEC darlings uh, or the SEC being their darling and whatnot, um, you can only take that so far and besides who's even I, I gotta even see who would the who the sec game would be like who's the competitive game uh technically to take this one away i mean i think they, they, it's kind of dialed down and not not sh you know oklahoma losing uh this week to south carolina takes some shine off oklahoma ole miss this week um you know missouri alabama same deal alabama losing to tennessee you're not trying to make that your game um you know, Florida State, Miami would have really been something, uh, but it's obviously Florida, Florida State now one inch train six. wreck. <laughs> um, so yeah, and and like your other option is LSU A and M. I, I think that that would be if you were if you were deciding, okay, we're just not giving it to the Big Ten at all. You would say, I guess LSU A and M because that does look like a pretty good game. But still, you know, it, it it's Indiana has gone too far for them to be ignored. I and I and they like this stuff, honestly. I mean, like, and I remember um, when. They did, uh, you know, basketball game day back in when when they brought Michigan in. It was, uh, I, I think, Michigan was number or Indiana was number one, Michigan number three. The the game when Oladipo almost had the dunk. Um, yeah. That we still have a picture that they have a picture of in Assembly Hall and still talk about. <laughs> and uh, it, it is the greatest. I talk about the greatest, the greatest almost dunk, dunk in the history of college basketball. Yeah, and somewhere Jordy Halls is hearing this and being like, I, I just if I would have just had a, just a normal lob, it was just <laughs> the worst pass. He still it, it eats at him. It's funny. Um, but all, you know, like I remember the skit they did, you know, Reese Davis was so happy to be there. Jay Billis was so happy to be there. And obviously this is the basketball side and it's different. Um, but they like Bloomington, you know, they, they do like Bloomington there. They it's like a college town. It is yeah, a college it, it, town. It's not a, it like Ohio state is in a big city. You know, mm -hmm. it's in Columbus. That's a large city. And this is a college town. Like Iowa's yeah. in a college town. Nebraska's in a college town. Those are college locations, and it's great. But also, you talked about the the uh, the ESPN uh, game day dais. You, you got Desmond Howard from Michigan. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got uh, you mentioned Pat McAfee and Herb Street and Lee Corso, the former right. Indiana yeah. coach. And then mm -hmm. there's a relationship between Nick Saban and and Kurt Signetti. So sure. yeah. that's a lot of comfort. Although last week uh, I made note of this, uh, Dustin. When the picks came up for Indiana, Nebraska, it was mm -hmm. Indiana across the board with one exception, and that was Nick Saban. He picked That's Nebraska. Fine. This <laughs> versus, like, would you put it past him one bit to to do that just to me mess with Kurt? Like, nope. it, as, as a former staff member, just to be like, Still I'm not you know. because he said, I think the defense makes the difference here. He kind of right. threw yeah. that out. 
I didn't, really did not, did it? Uh, no, but I mean, the, the, the rat poison concept, if you think about it, you know, yes. like everybody, you know, like Sabin is the type, you know, used to say, well, everybody's telling you you're great. Um, that is eventually going to be your downfall. Um, so it's almost like he probably looked at it as I'm doing you a favor and, and having at least one person pick against you. Like, as long as there's somebody who doesn't believe you have a better shot. <laughs> so that's going to be me. You know, like I could see Nick Saban being that guy that, that like, OK, like someone's got to pick against you because otherwise you're thinking you're going to steamroll everybody. And then at some point you won't. Um, and so, you know, I think that that I could see Nick Saban doing that to one of his guys or I could, you know, like. Yeah, I mean that that's we're just I, I can see Nick Saban's just a different cat cat. So I I can see him going down all kinds of different psychological avenues with that. Um but yeah, I mean to, to the broader point, it's like the the way it looks right now, I mean obviously this is a look and, and and as you were mentioning on the Maha before, you know, like the, their schedule has only been so much. We talked about it this way at the beginning of the year that this was a reason why they could get off to a really good start. Um but it's the dominance that you look at and you say, OK, well, like it, it's one thing if you're beating everybody by a touchdown and you're seven and oh, like you would look at that as OK. At some point, this train's going to come to a stop, you know, like it, it's you know, it's it's not going to be able to go on forever. They've been fortunate to have a really good schedule. Um, but when you play the best team, like the, the best team that you have faced and you beat them 56 to seven, like you basically nobody knows how good they are yet. Like we have we have no idea like they are. But we know they're really good, you know. Like we, we know they're really good. Like there's no, nobody has touched them yet. Nobody has slowed them down yet. I mean, like, I mean, like I presume they lose to Ohio state, but I don't know that anymore. You know, like I, uh, I, I've been operating on the assumption uh, that, that was a sure yeah. bet for the entirety of the year. And mm -hmm. I am less certain about that today. Um, and so, I mean, Hey, like, and, and to, to own it, like, when you started saying, man, there might be six and oh, I was like, Jim, you really, <laughs> you got to take it easy, buddy. And you were way more right than I was. So I have to, I, I, I feel like I've acknowledged that enough on this show, but I got to acknowledge yep. it again that like man, when you were talking, and wake, I'm like, man, I've seen this movie before, Jim, you know how it ends. Like, what do you, what, like, are you really want to set yourself up to this much disappointment again? Um, but they, they are way better than I thought, like a whole lot better than I thought. So yeah. and it's it's crazy because it's crazy yeah. to think it's it's hard it's hard to turn a basketball program over to turn right. I mean, to turn it over in mm -hmm. a year right to turn a football program over in a year is I don't I don't think that it's possible well the issue I'm I mean watching it I've watched it happen and I'm like right. I, I still don't know that how it's well, that possible but, but again to, I mean the we we do have to change historical. The, the like historical lens on it yes because yes you because it time used to be that you could not like right. 10 years Absolutely. ago this was, you could not have done this he couldn't have done it five years ago five it was literally years not ago. there, there was not a legal pathway like, yes to, to do this you know like 10 years ago like there's i mean like, like literally we're talking 10 like um you know like I, I I think Kevin Wilson so often when I think of Signetti, and that's not fair. Like I'm not giving Signetti enough credit, you know, because again, Wilson had been just an offensive coordinator, hadn't been a head coach yet. Um, and you know, again, like in, in imaginary scenario where you put Wilson in this position, you know, he's not taking all Americans away from Bob Stoops at that point, you know. But he he probably gets some dudes that weren't playing, you know, some second string guys, you know, stuff like that. I and mean, we could probably look back at the roster of Oklahoma and say, okay. Who, who, what top recruits weren't getting any, you know, getting any snaps at this point? Would they have followed him? But like, you know, the, the difference is, is like Kurt Signetti could literally go get like his top 10, 15 guys at JMU, which is a good team at that point, um, and say, you know, let's go. Like, let, let's go do this. And it's not as big of a leap for them. And, and like also the entire just like, I mean, it, it, it's obviously the entire landscape is much more ripe for this. But like 10 years ago, it's not even legal to go get this many guys to get the, the you know, if you're going to get this many transfers, you have to wait for them. Like you're going to have to wait a year, you know? Um, and, and, you know, with the COVID year, guys are older. Like just, there's a whole bunch of things that were not available to somebody like Kevin Wilson that are available to Kirk Sidney. So when we're going to talk about historical turnarounds, you know, like we have to keep that in mind. It's sort of like, you know, it, it's almost like they move the fences in 30 feet when you're talking about home runs. And, you know, it's just like it, it, it's, it is, it is easier, but, like, like all the same. I mean, he's building this mostly on James Madison transfers and an Ohio U guy and, and, and like stuff like that. Like it's still to be able to come into the big 10 and not just 
beat teams, but absolutely wallop them when they have the access to the same things, you know, like they can go get everybody else in the league can go get transfers too. you know, everybody else in the league, you know, is dealing as, as got guys on COVID years still, you know, that, uh, that, that they can be in the league when they're 23, 24, you know, like all of these things are available to the rest of the league and like Indiana has done more with it um, than, than a lot of other teams. I mean, they're, they're not the only team that's had a changeover. They're not the only team that had, had a, a coach come over from someplace else where they were winning. Um, so like, you, you still got to give a ton of credit to the guy. Like, again, you, you have to, you have to change your historical parameters, you know, because again, like Bear Bryant couldn't do this, <laughs> you know, like, it's not like uh, you can, you, you can compare him to some of, you know, like programs like that, or, or, you know, like old turnarounds from the seventies or even, you know, like even, and even 10 years ago or even five years ago. Um, but this is, it's still remarkable. I mean, it's just, we're, um, I have a hard time believing that we're not watching the best IU football team in history. Uh, oh, there's no doubt about that. Like, and the remarkable thing we, about I'll, hold on a second, somewhere George Talaferro is mad at me, so I'm just you know, I, they like, have their opportunity to to exceed that. I mean, yeah, there's opportunity to exceed that, but somewhere team. like George, they did George, have George, George somewhere Perro, in, in his Ed Glazuski, who played for the Reds, right, uh, hmm. on that team as well. Back in 1945, they were a, a great team, no doubt. Hmm. But what is this IU team going to be like? when they have four and five stars on it, because this team has been built. They talk about the transfers. These guys all came from James Madison, from Old Dominion, from Ohio, mm -hmm. from all these kinds of places. And I mentioned this multiple times, 44 players on this team, Dustin, had zero star ratings when they came out of high school. That's mm -hmm. half of the roster. That's not possible to do what they're doing. One would think, but they are doing it. The, I mean, I like, I will say this. It was like, I cut, I mean, I, I kind of, well, partially covered James Madison back in oh, like oh four to oh nine. Like I didn't, I was secondary guy helped out. Mike Barber um, was, you know, one of my best buddies and he was, he was the football guy. I was the basketball guy. So like I would come, come out to write sidebars, but my point is I saw them. Like, so I'm not going to act like that was my beat. And I, and, and I like dug into it. Like I was covering a, a pretty, usually pretty, you know, a rough basketball team, but you know, they won the one, eight, one double a, um, title in 04 and they were number one for a while in 08 um and i say this to say like zero star recruits like they turn out to be pretty good by the time they're 22 when went like it at it, it, that level um and there's a lot of talent there like what what james madison really built itself up on is um like there's a ton of talent in virginia beach virginia beach newport news um, you know, Norfolk, like that pocket down there in Richmond, there's a lot of players and Virginia and Virginia Tech don't get all of them. And like Signetti, I even saw him mention in an interview, like everybody you get from there is mad that UVA and Virginia Tech didn't recruit them. And so they develop like crazy. And so like there's dudes, it's sort of like in the same way that like Tom Allen would recruit Florida. And it was like, okay, all, all these guys were mad at Florida and Florida state didn't recruit him in Miami. Um, and, and, but also there's enough talent there to go around. Um, and you get it into a weight room for three, four years and it's a different player. Like it's not, you're not getting the zero star version of these guys. You're getting the 22 year old version of these guys that have already accomplished something. And you know, like the other piece is, is like when you play, you develop, more. you know, like when you actually play, when you're not, you know, stuck behind these other four and five star guys. Like you actually play football games, you know, like it's the same as basketball. It's like when you get games under your belt, um, you're a different player. So like, it's dramatically different. Like I'm not trying to tell you that the recruiting is not going to help, but what I would mention was when, Indy, when, when they were winning under Tom Allen and they started getting a bunch of players. So obviously the hard part was keeping them. Like there was a lot of them they lost when things started to go south because there was that one class where it was like, wow, this is going to be the best IU class in history. And a lot of those guys didn't make it to Bloomington. So, but even some of the ones that did, you, you haven't necessarily seen them turn out in part because you're bringing all these transfers in. So it's going to be a different deal, you know, in, in terms of when they start getting high school players in. And it's a different deal for everybody frankly, in terms of like, how, how do those guys rise up through this when you're constantly you know, bringing in new 22 year olds, you know, and you're asking these 18 year old kids to compete with them, um, you know, like they're not going to play as freshmen and it's like, okay, well, when do they, 
you know, and how much does that kind of hinder their uh, development? And so sort of everybody's on a different track and that's not a IU deal by itself. Like everybody is dealing with this. So, um, it, you know, like, it's just we, we can't use our, our again, like our historical viewpoints and say, OK, well, this is what it looked like 10 years ago, you know, and when they got going and then they got these recruits and then it was like this and then it was like that and then it was like that. And it's like we're not you're not taking the same steps necessarily that like they are different. But, you know, obviously you go into a portal, the portal again. It's not like, you know, he's shut off from the portal when he becomes a new coach. Um, so, you know, like. We have no idea what this is going to look like, how long this is going to be sustainable. You know, like if if there's a lightning in a bottle circumstance where he just had the right guys at the right place at the right time and, and it'll uh, change over time and it would, you know, whether it'll be sustainable is a different question. Um, you know, and again, this is just weird one and they've played seven games. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, but it by itself in, you know, is is remarkable. Like nobody can stop these guys right now. Like they they are they are just I mean, like they're scissors through paper on offense. I mean, it's that easy, you know, like, and it, it, they, I think that's the thing that really stood out to me yesterday. I was like, or Saturday, I was like, like they, 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 nothing, football doesn't look hard for them. You know, it's no. just like the, even when they were good with the, with the OO team, like, or the 2020 team, you could see like, at least sometimes football looks hard, you know, like at least sometimes you're like run up against somebody where like, Oh, that, you know, this is how it's supposed to look, you know, you're playing Penn state, you're playing Michigan. Like there's going to be drives, possessions or whatever, where, um, you know, football looks difficult. The other guy moves the ball. The other guy gets somewhere like, you know, for the greater part of, you know, 60 minutes on Saturday, like it didn't look hard. You know, it, it looked like they were just, they were just light years above the team they were playing. And that's how it's looked all year so far. I hear you. We've got to take a uh, pause for the cause. Dustin DePirick with the Indy stars with us. The, uh, beat writer for the Indianapolis, Indiana Pacers. Uh, wow, I said that. Indiana Pacers, uh, as their season is, uh, when's game one? Wednesday. Right? Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I knew they had a little break between the uh, preseason. So uh, we'll talk about that and much more when we return to the Hard Truth Distilling Company Studios right after this. this segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Andy Moore Honda is Bloomington's number one Honda dealer for a reason. Buy a new Honda and get a three-month break from car payments. That's right, no payments for 90 days. That includes the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue. And you get it for just 0.9% financing. Or the 2024 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition or the Honda Accord LX, both for just 1.9% financing. Get more to your door from AndyMoreHonda.com, Bloomington's number one Honda dealer and your best place for new and used vehicles. 